look here, all of the sled decks here, they are all pulling away, right? There's not a single dog there that is kind of moving slow, right? Equal pace in the same direction. So with you guys and your teams, equal pace, fast, activity in the same direction. That's a mode of success in the boot camp. So have this mental image, guys, as you get together into the teams in the boot camp and beyond the boot camp. I think that's it. Where's Andrew? <laughs> the main sled dog is. Uh, <laughs> where's the main? <laughs> yeah, uh, but are we taking a break? What is? Uh, I yeah. think you're going straight through and then something else. Okay, that's um, that's all right. Are you guys um, are you guys doing all right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is fast. So. Uh, fantastic. All right. So. <clears throat> We also want to let you know what else to expect um, in the bootcamp. But um, if you recall how you guys got here, in the application there was a question, you know, what's the world going to be like in, in 30 years and what the place is going to be in that world? Do you guys have a sense of why we asked the question? Anybody? Right? Try to anticipate future problems. Yes, that, that's part of it, but that's not all. Um, it was actually a very open-ended question, so you might have used uh, you know that opportunity to watch uh, till what extent can we actually you know imagine and think. Fair, fair, um, but again, that doesn't complete the picture. We'll, we'll come back to you. Um, kind of see where everyone thinks they will be in thirty years, and just see what mindset they're in to get there. All right. So I'll, I'll just wrap it up here. We'll, we'll come back to it for sure. Um, but all of, all of this is, is fair, and all of this is correct. But there is something else here in the world. And that is, we currently live in a world of short-term thinking. Right? Look at the magazines. They propagate instant success. If somebody started this company, and a year from now, they raised a ton of money. And two years from now, they sold the company for a bunch of money. And now they have a manager. Or, you know, this person did this, and suddenly this company is a unicorn, right? We're being bombarded by all of them, right? Is that, is that mm -hmm. fair to say? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Right? And, you know, our belief is that this is not the world we want to live in. Because it, uh, it incentivizes the wrong things. It incentivizes instant success. It incentivizes money. But the real break <coughs> Sometimes there is a rapid acceleration of change, like change, change, but well, really fundamentally, if you look at anything, right, um, that was significant um, in, in life, uh, in, in the history of humanity, that took time, you know. There was, uh, there was a man in, um, in England, uh, for some reason, I'm, I'm failing to uh, remember his name, he was, um, thank you, thank you, say it again, please.
30 years? Yeah. Something amazing happened for the world at large. And so the journey, we invite you on this journey of thinking now. And the question becomes, all right, well, how do we get there? And we're going to break it down. The journey starts here. And the way the bootcamp is designed is to put you on this mountain to see far, but actually give you the tools to start getting there, breaking down the journey. What you will see this week is a very intense period of activity. Um, the first couple of days, we're going to front load the content. Yes, you know, I'm looking at a lot of you, you know, some of you are joining, that's understandable, jet lag, you also parted uh, last night. Uh, you're not gonna be any fresher, believe me. Uh, this will continue. <laughs> but <laughs> toward, toward the end of the week, uh, we'll create um, a massive chunk of time for you guys to focus on, on your project, on your companies. And uh, that's where the mentors are going to be incredibly important. They'll be working very closely with you to make sure that you are accelerating. Today, tomorrow, we want you guys to start forming the team. Yes, if you want to work on your own ideas by yourself, this is fine. But we certainly don't encourage that. Anything tremendous requires people working together. And so we want you guys to embrace it. So start meeting your classmates. You already began doing that. Continue this process. <coughs> Bonding is a very, very important element of the boot camp. You might think that I'm being perhaps too optimistic, but I'll, but I'll say that uh, in this room, there will be people who will go to your children's lab. Yes, it's going to happen. Like if, if you look around, some people in this room, when you have kids, you become a you or you don't, or you will, uh, and they have weddings. Some people from this room will go to those weddings. I guarantee you that. Right? And that's a special thing, probably the most special and actually, the reason that it happens is you're currently very tired. Actually, it is that tiredness that will lead you to that amazing destination where you've made lifelong friends. Because when you're tired, completely broken down, you're yourself. Right? There's no veneer that you're presenting to everyone around. There's no PR. It's you. Right? And uh, <coughs> special things happen when it's just you. Importantly, there will be demo we want to put you guys in the spot. You're going to work very hard this week, and we want to give you an opportunity to actually, on Friday, present yourself in front of entrepreneurs, in front of investors, show what you got, right? Kind of get it out there. The presentations on Friday will be 10 minutes with uh, 10 minutes of um, Q&A. Um, the way we are going to, to do it is, uh, actually, I'll, I'll come back to it. Uh, there will be, there will be a, a runoff. Um, we'll have um, three tracks. Uh, the, the image actually indicates uh, two. Uh, but because you know, there were uh, so many, we came, we had to create uh, three tracks. And because we decided to enable kind of more flexible, fluid information process, now we, we need more tracks to actually make sure that everyone gets an opportunity. The judges will be uh, investors, entrepreneurs, but leaders. Uh, we want to create a, a, good, a good combination of people who can weigh in as kind of fellow uh, entrepreneurs, but also people who are looking at you, huh, is this something that I uh, might want to invest in? In fact, uh, the, the very first um, uh, start of that one hour demo day from class one, uh, as Billis, um, uh, Davis, and Mateos Outlook, they, they got offered money on the day of their presentation. They decided not to take the money, and you should talk to them because that's past lives, so it's an interesting story. But uh, you know, we we would like you to get there. We also want to give you a sense of how the judges are going to be evaluating you, and we are going to actually give a very uh, concrete rubric that is this to the judges as a lesson. Please evaluate the team on the following set of criteria. Team chemistry will matter a lot. Um, you know, when I when I used to be um, a venture guy, and you know, you're sitting you're sitting in the boardroom, and uh, there is a team coming to pitch. 
Like you can, you can often feel it. Pain comes in, and it's this undescribable feeling of cohesion. And when you feel this cohesion, that's when you want to pull the wall around. We hope you get there. But importantly, we want you to present an understanding of the customer. Like razor shop. This is who the customer is. Mm -hmm. This is the problem that they identify. This problem is painful in the following way. And our solution is superior. What's more, we'll be able to deliver the solution through a business model that creates value for our customer and creates value for us as a company. And ultimately, and that's very similar to team chemistry, but also in combination with what you actually presented, the, the overall impression. Right? Uh, you cannot take the impression something for you guys to think about as you go along. Uh, I'm going to skip through. This is really the, um, the model of demo day. Um, we added the third track after uh, we, we developed this slide. Uh, but there'll be three tracks, and from each track, uh, some things will go into the final. Oh, 
the wearables market is uh, $5 billion. It's fantastic. All right. It's the research that we develop. But remember, you as entrepreneurs, you're going to create knowledge. Mm -hmm. You're creating new knowledge. And you're creating value from the new knowledge. <coughs> then, once you've really hit it hard with what the problem is, you'll, you'll have to generate some thinking about, well, <laughs> what makes your solution the best? Like, what is it about it that just addresses the problem in the right way, in the way that the customers will appreciate and cannot wait to get a hold of. Um, competitive position, uh, you are offering a solution. It is unlikely that you are alone. Um, hopefully you're not alone, but if you are, then you need to sign that original layer there. Uh, but uh, what makes you better than competition on the specific value proposition that you offer to the customer? Our value proposition is right. That's why the customer cares about the value proposition. And if you look at the value proposition, the competitive position brings promise and revolve. Um, financing, how the customer is going to get a hold of your uh, product, buy your product, um, how you're going to go to market, what will be your business model, how will you create value. Right, that brings forth the financial. Financial. This is strategy, this is our business model, therefore our financials look like this, and it's not that we expect you to have, uh, no one expects you to have concrete <coughs> projections that will be accurate. It, it ain't, it ain't going to happen uh, at all, right? Because no one can predict the future, but as long as your thinking is logical, consistent, grounded in assumptions that are transparent, uh, shared, uh, you can be challenged. Uh, validated and proved, then the investor or the future employee, co-founder, is getting confident in, in your business. Uh, finally, uh, your team. Um, there are different ways actually of doing it. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs present the team at the end. That's, that's, that's a good way to do it. Once you uh, build some momentum with what you have in the deck, you say, oh, this is our team. We deliver on, uh, on this fantastic opportunity. Um, other, other entrepreneurs start with the team right away. This is who we are. We are a team, and you know, we discover this customer problem, and we'll do the following. So you have some flexibility. And importantly, you got to hit it hard with you know, why you present. What is your ask? Are you asking for the folks to invest in your company? Are you asking for the folks to join your company? Are you asking for the folks to be a strategic partner to your company? Very concrete ask that people can actually Take away. I think one thing uh, in the last point where you are asking uh, for you know investors or whatever is the motive of the presentation, do the other uh, initial points uh, differ for for different asks? For example, I'm delivering a deck to uh, an investor, yeah. and in the other case, I'm delivering a deck deck to potential joinees in my company. Yeah. So the, uh, do the other parts of the presentation would they change? But do they generally change? Uh, they they could, right? Uh, I mean, it's it, it's a very uh, situation specific uh, kind of question. They can, they they don't have to. I mean, your underlying business fundamentals should, should not change, right? Yeah, this yeah. is this is still True. your business, but mm -hmm. obviously you ask you ask mm -hmm. should change mm -hmm. depending on the audience, okay. right? Is, is this is this a fair answer to your question? Yeah. Somewhat there, but yeah. Uh, I mean, this is a uh, subjective question anyway. I'll ask you uh, maybe offline or something. Yeah, um, uh, absolutely. Uh, but I mean, yes, Lane. Right. I just want to say we're going to talk about all that again on Thursday. Yeah, okay. Uh, we're just trying to give you a sense of where you're heading. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we will talk about all that again on okay. Thursday. Okay. Um, just this a sidebar and ask. Yes, uh, if you say judges, you are going to pretend to be. Uh, <laughs> being recruited to join the board of scientific advisors for ThinX, right? And you're asked would you, would you join our board? What, please, what, 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 one thing we want you to please don't do is, please don't say after 10 minutes, um, I would like you to, do, uh, to invest $2 million on four. I, you know, right now, you know, my ask to you is two on four. Will you invest two on four, you know? That's not done, right? A 10 minute pitch is a pitch to earn your 45 minute pitch, right? So. 
generally the ass is often more time or something, or you could say we're trying to race around for such and such, and we would like to have a, uh, you know, the ass is a con conversation with you to follow up on this, this, uh, this, this business opportunity. Because I think what happens a lot of people say, I need $15 million now, please. After having not met them, and you just gave them an elevator pitch, plus a 10-minute uh, pitch, and you're asking for $15 million, <laughs> <laughs> and an example that would um, differ from yours, um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't contradict uh, yours, but oftentimes if, if you're going to be pitching to investors, let's say you're pitching to an institutional investor, a venture firm, what is going to happen is that you're going to identify a partner in the firm who's going to be the champion of your deal. So your first meetings are going to be with that person, your job will be to impress that person. From that point on, if a partner is interested, uh, that partner will usually bring the deal to the uh, to the partnership on, on a Monday morning meeting. And we see them to meet um, every every Monday morning, and they go through a roundup of um, all the deals in action. So the, the partner will pitch on their behalf, like, "Hey guys, I want to bring this um, this team in. Uh, they're interesting to us because they're doing X Y Z. I think this is um, special for the following. I think we we can put an X." Uh, into the company, you know, what do you think, right? And then from that point, the, the partner brings you uh, to the partnership and you're presenting to, to, to the rest of the team. And oftentimes, uh, those meetings, uh, because there's been quite a bit of socialization before, they usually begin by the entrepreneur saying like, hey folks, you know, delighted, delighted to be here, um, just to make sure that, you know, we're all together here. Uh, we are looking to raise, you know, 10. Um, that's why we think this is a special opportunity for you, so let us take you through that. Okay. So that's like the third or fourth touch with that right. firm. Right. You would not start a conversation with one person, spend five minutes and obtain $15 million, <laughs> unless you're Elon Musk, in which case you can obtain probably $2 billion on five minutes of conversation. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, it's a very intense uh, program, and I would like to know if it's possible to develop an MVP and try to test it at some point, and to show the result of the testing for the, for the pitch day. Yeah. So we will have a, a space for that. So uh, that uh, has been done before. You can uh, talk to Marius. Uh, when uh, Marius was, uh, actually, he was in a program that was a pre-bootcamp program. Uh, it was a one-week program. They started on Monday. On Wednesday, was it Wednesday when uh, TV crew started showing up <laughs> to, to get his interviews. So that, that happened. But yes, yes, you can do that. And Elaine, please kind of um, <laughs> share your perspective as well and challenge me. But I would say it's not as important as actually going through the steps with your team, right? Um, and you're not going to do a perfect job, but you want to go through the, the process of understanding your customer developing the end user profile, developing the persona, developing the full life cycle use case, developing the deck. And ultimately it's going to be um, more important to me from my perspective in terms of value from the bootcamp than actually coming up with a prototype in, in the bootcamp. Elaine, but what do you so think? So uh, with Alfeo at MIT frequently we get people who fixate on the product and without Alfeo, 90% of the company failures fail because the market isn't right. So if you can do an MVP and test it, more power to you. If you can put out a landing page to test hypotheses, I like that more than MV MVP having written some code. Um, if you instead spend even more time understanding the customers and build a really solid persona, I like that even more. Because I think it, you know, it's not, no one builds a company in five days, right? So we're really kind of just understanding what it takes to learn about the process so that you can go do it for real. And it takes three years, five years, and the upfront investment in understanding the customer, that's really what's missing a lot of times from technology-led startups. And um, we at MIT feel that pain especially deeply because our startups tend to be you know, really light on market understanding. So we, we try to make sure we front load that. And, and that's the most important thing, really, who is your customer. So yeah, yeah so mm -hmm. completely agree with everything I just said. Uh, and this, this guy is, um, fits into actually, you know, some guidelines for, for your pitch. Um, you know, what is, what is your story? So imagine if you, uh, you know, spend your time in the bootcamp developing a prototype, right? 
Okay. Um, what is your story on Friday at Demo Day? Uh, we've developed a, a prototype and put it in the hands of uh, folks, right? That begins, uh, this story begins to emerge. But contrast it with the story of like, hey, you know, I'm Joao and I'm, I'm passionate about, you know, solving this super painful and currently unmet need of this customer. And we, we understand it because, you know, I'm personally the customer, but, you know, I'm not the only <laughs> customer in the market. There are many of us who, who share this need. Uh, because of X, Y, and Z, right? That, that somewhat of a more powerful story there, right? Um, but again, that's not to say what, you know, prototyping is not important. Um, use imagery, like bring to life, like take people into, into your world and break it down, simplify. Uh, don't kind of simplify to the extent that suddenly it's, it's unclear what it is that uh, you're doing. But if you show um, understanding of what it is that you're engaging with of the problem and how you're solving it, and you kind of base your simplification on that, that, beca that becomes a very palatable pitch for the audience to receive. Right? When, when you show such mastery of the problem that it, you explain it very simply, that is actually, that's, you know, I've been on the receiving end of it, and it's, it's, it's very powerful and inviting. They want to be you want to pull your wallet out and you want to be a part of that. Um, so um, as, as Elaine said, uh, we, we want to give an introduction to what uh, the, your pitches will be. But on Thursday, we are going to focus on it a lot more. Uh, we're going to dedicate a, a special segment to what your pitches should be. Uh, you'll get uh, a lot of um, mock pitch opportunities where you receive, feed where you receive feedback from the mentors. So I should, I should stop here. Um, and But let me make sure that, uh, you know, uh, your questions, questions are answered. Do you guys have any questions? Only one thing. Uh, there can be you two you case na two scenarios. In one case, uh, it, there could be a very fancy pitch, okay, but the without an MVP. But uh, you know, uh, since we are coming up with a new idea, we might not have tested the MVP, and there might be some you know, uh, yeah. it might be uh, practically unfeasible at the end of the day or something like that. This is one case. And the second case is that, yes, okay, we have uh, made some MVP in three days or four days, and we have some proof of concept ready, but yes, we are not that good uh, in, uh, in the story phase and all that. So which, how do you as judges, uh, you know, uh, weigh both these things? Because there could be a wonderful story, but no product behind that. On the other hand, there could be, uh, you know, uh, an okay, okay, average story, but yes, a product to show al go along with it. Well, uh, and Elaine, please uh, add to this. I'll, I'll offer my perspective. It's really not an um, either or uh, mm -hmm. si situation, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, yes, you can uh, develop a prototype, but okay, uh, if it does it does it solve does it solve a problem, right? Uh, or you can have a wonderful story that uh, is not backed up by a mastery level understanding of of the problem, right? So. You know, the simple answer to what you're saying is like both would be great, but uh, ideally in the boot camp here, and look, you have your whole life of entrepreneurship mm -hmm. ahead of you, like your whole life. Um, focus on the fundamentals now. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to build on that and say. I've got a great idea. <laughs> 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 <Sorry. laughs> <laughs> All right, want to build on what Adrian said. Um, actually, there are, there's a case study. Um, I think that was boot camp number two. And we had a team that was working on a solar powered uh, backup power source for um, urban Nigerian apartments. Yeah. So they clearly aren't gonna make a prototype and have somebody's mother. In fact, they were interviewing somebody's mother who actually had a building like that. So they actually did great work on the primary market research side of things considering that they were here and the power problem is in Lagos, right? So I, uh, I think Daniel, yeah. Yeah. Daniel yeah. came yeah. to me and he said, I want to build a prototype. I'm like, dude, <laughs> <laughs> what? How are you gonna build a prototype? And he said, we'll build a Lego prototype. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> build a PowerPoint prototype. I mean, you, you, have, to be, you have to be practical, it's one week. So there are some things that you can probably, if you're making a mobile dating app, well, you can write the whole code in two days, fine. You know, Avi can probably write it, where's Avi? He can probably write it in two hours. 
what's the purpose? This is not a hackathon, right? And then we also don't want to discourage people who want to do drug, drug um, development, like, you know, Debra, what, what did Debra go, right? I mean, like, she's got like a healthcare medical device startup that came out of bootcamp number two, right? Bootcamp two? Yeah. Right? So there's a whole range of potential problems to solve, some of which are really, you know, incompatible with prototyping in five days. In fact, some are in, incompatible with prototyping in, in five months. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to value a mobile app that's got a working UI over a well thought through solar power backup system for charging mobile phones for job seekers and like who right now are in pain because their cell phones would die because 50% of the time, you know, like you, you see the, where we're going, right? We're interested in the fundamentals. And um, I think that you, uh, I'll just go say it. So we're, we're being very um, uh, careful about not telling you not what not to do, but really the prototype oftentimes takes time away from the business fundamentals and we'd rather you spend time doing um, the front end work because that's going to change what you build. Mm -hmm. so that's and um, if, if you don't mind, Alain, I'll um, focus in a little bit more on, um, on this particular case study of uh, the, um, the solar team from, from class two. Because mm -hmm. uh, the way that um, startup emerged, they, um, they knew that um, a lot of people and uh, children in particular in the world die. And uh, that's a problem in uh, developing countries like you know, my own country, Kyrgyzstan, uh, where uh, people cook in the house and they, uh, they cook by burning coal, right? so the sort of that's a source of heat, and so that creates smoke, uh, which, um, which uh, uh, creates disease and uh, oftentimes kills kids. And so they said, we want to do something, something about that. Mm -hmm. And they said, okay, well, surely the way to do it, you know, because these people don't have electricity, right? The way to do it is to create solar-powered cookers. Right? That's, that's how that... Um, team that um, idea emerged. But then you really start peeling it apart and our mentors did a great job there. What do you think is a the problem there? What problem do you think they, they are trying to solve? And what do you think is the problem there? So if, if there's a problem that people die because there's smoke in the house, what is the problem? Anyone guesses? By the way, there is no right answer to, to this question, but what are, your, what are your thoughts as to what um, specific problem is um, at the heart of the matter here. There might be very few air outlets in the house. The mm. house is not engineered uh, nicely enough. Yeah, okay. You need engineering mm. tools. Mm. Air quality. Uh huh. Okay, anybody else? No. That's, 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 these are all fair cases, yeah. No, maybe it's constant electricity. Mm hmm. Yeah, coal is the cheapest form of energy, so there's no way to support that. Yeah. So, uh, guys, just um, you know, pay attention at uh, the different answers that uh, were offered here. So, on the one hand, the problem here that's being suggested, there is not enough outlet in, in the house, right? Then the problem here is that coal is the cheapest form of energy. So, you know, and these people are at the bottom of the economic pyramid, and so uh, mo money is an issue here. But you see how the solutions to these two problems would be entirely different. The solution here is all right, well, can we engineer houses in a way that lets the smoke out? Mm -hmm. Which is a very different kind of solution from putting a solar powered cooker. Because um, you, you start uh, talking to the team, and that was, that was very interesting for, for us, and that's the reason I, uh, I remember it well, is you sa they say, well, you know, if, they said, if we are going to if we, if we produce a solar-powered cooker, then that problem is going to be solved. And you say, okay, well, for the solar-powered cooker to work, it needs to be outside, right? Because it needs to mm -hmm. get the sun. And so, yeah, okay, sure, they'll be cooking outside. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, if they're going to be cooking outside with your solar-powered cooker, why are, not, why are they not cooking outside now? Mm -hmm. With the coals, because you can just start a fire outside. Mm -hmm. Why are they not doing it? And suddenly, okay, well, wait a second. I'm really understanding the problem here. The, the point of this all, guys, is actually understanding what the specific problem you are solving, like peeling it apart, takes time. And often this 
uh, at least from my uh, perspective, the most difficult side. Focus on that. Because if you can unlock it, if you can take something complex that is multifaceted and many entrepreneurial opportunities are that, you actually, like, you know that there is like a set of problems, but what is the underlying problem? If you don't like that, man, you'll be able to create something special. Any other questions? Yeah, Olga. For a situation like this, when your customer is not in Boston, uh -huh. how would you do the primary market research to bring them so many interviews? Um, Elaine, again, uh, actually, let me Yes, in that you. case, um, I think that what happened was that they said, we want to do something in Nigeria. And I don't think there was anyone in that group who was from Nigeria. This happens frequently. They are passionate about something they don't know anything about. <laughs> so <laughs> what do they do? They're like, oh, wow, there's 33 countries in the cohort. I bet someone. So Simi, right? Or is yeah. that his name? Uh, Simi. 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 Yeah. Simi. Right. So Simi was from Nigeria. And in fact, his mother had the problem that, you know. So anyway, so what happened was they went to the cohort. That, does anybody know anyone who has this kind of a thing? And lo and behold, there was Simi. And Simi said, let me call some friends for you. So Simi hooked them up with a bunch of his own friends and his mom and stuff, and they did some video Skype. Now, um, I have a whole spiel on developing countries and how to do primary market research there, um, involving a video with milk in India that I won't get into. Eventually, you have to go there, but start anywhere you can start, right? And in this particular situation, um, find someone in the cohort who actually has connections, and you'll be amazed how far you can get with two degrees of separation. Yeah. You'll be amazed. And, and Radin's yeah. gonna tell you all about how to find suspects about yeah. primary market research. So we're going to focus on that um, tomorrow, but actually offering you the tools to be able to get in front of potential um, customers as quickly as possible and start getting reliable data. But back to this case of the solar power um, startup, when they started doing the PMR, they pivoted to offering um, solar panels to apartment buildings. And if you kind of continue pursuing this line of uh, peeling apart the onion to find the real problem, what these guys discovered is that what really pisses people off is when they're watching a soccer game and suddenly the lights come off. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like that gets people real angry. Right? You know, they start talking to people like, hey, you know, like you, you, you're cooking with uh, coal, you know, at home, you know, do you think that's a problem? Uh, yeah, maybe, right? Uh, but when it was soccer game, it was off because electricity was off. Uh, you know, uh, I need a solution, right? Um, so um, that's that's an interesting case of how kind of your thinking can evolve and why it's so important to, to focus in on uh, this particular part. Um, so, wrapping this up? Okay. When you, uh, whenever you're done. <laughs> any? Hey, we're gonna be here all week. Um, but any any other questions? Oh, yes, please, I, I, I forgot about it. I was just wondering if you could go back to the judgment scale slide. Yep. Uh-huh. Actually, uh, it's uh, something even related to the MVP because we are focused on the problem. It's 100% clear. But you know, where is the factability about the solution proposed? Because you know, we have like a global problem like cancer cure. Now you develop a pill that you take and you are free from cancer. So everybody needs this solution, but it's not factible. You know, so I'm not saying that I'm going to propose that. It's just a stream case, so yeah. I want to understand what happens in between because maybe I can provide something like, you know, you can buy online like fruits and vegetables, but there's a very strong thing behind which is a supply chain. So uh, I want to see where at the beach we show the factability about the solution or we don't need to focus on that. Well, you absolutely need to focus on that, right? As uh, your goal is to uncover mm -hmm. <coughs> painful and unmet problem, unsolved problem, develop a superior solution, and three, make 
ensure you can deliver the solution in an economically viable way to the customer and to you. So there's no doubt at all. And yes, you know, of course you're not going to have the solution filled out in its entirety, but we want from you a clear, logical story of why that solution is possible. Uh, well, thank you guys. Andrew, yeah. more to you.